some strawberry leaves. These are wild strawberry. Some more right here. Obviously wild edible when the fruit comes along soon. Um, but these leaves make a very pleasant tasting tea. Um, it's also medicinal uh, for like stomach issues. One of my favorite teas, wild teas to drink. Here's a wild strawberry that's flowered. These are actually poisonous once these fruits are larger and they're ripe and they're lemony yellow then they become edible and they'll get about like that big around or so but they have to be a lemony yellow and ripe in order to use them and eat them common blue violets these are edible. They're high in vitamin A. And the flowers and these leaves, some larger ones. Those are edible. Some more common blue violets, purple, but some spring beauties. The corms, which are little bulb bulbs, not very big, most often. Those are edible. They have an outer shell casing on them. You uh, remove that outer shell casing and then you can boil them up and eat them like a potato. It tastes just like an earthy potato. Pretty good. Tedious to dig up a lot, but they're plentiful. Some more in with the violets. Right here's some wild onion growing in it. It's another wild edible. These are trout lily leaves. Before, when they first come up, the shoots come up and they're still curled up, they're edible. Uh, you can boil them in water for 10 minutes they have a cucumber taste but once they get opened up and larger they're not really edible anymore there's lots of different kinds of trout lilies These are your wild leek, the narrow leaved wild leek. The other one has a purplish stem. These are narrower leaves. Uh, they're like a garlicky, garlicky onion. Uh, very good. Spring Beauty. That's the leaf of the Spring Beauty. Narrow leaved wild leek. The 
This is an invasive species, garlic mustard. They have a garlicky, garlicky flavor, the leaves. Um, younger is always better. They get a little bit bitter with age as do with many plants. Violet and a poison ivy starting to come out. You don't want to touch that. There's some purple phlox. Phlox is one of the plants that carry, that have saponin in it so you can crush them up real good and add water and it's like a soap you can wash your hands or whatever other wild leeks, Alium trichocum. You can see the purplish stems. They're a lot larger, more broad of a leaf versus the narrow-leaved. You know, the bulbs are edible as well as the whole leaf. The leaves are just as good, if not better, and they take a long time to regenerate. So I usually only gather leaves so that it'll keep growing back and I only gather them in abundant areas. This is an abundant area. These are possibly my favorite wild edible. large flowered trillium. Now when young, before they bud and before the flowers appear, uh, the leaves are edible and can be added fresh to salads or boiled for 10 minutes. Uh, this is one that can be abundant in certain areas. Uh, large flowered trillium is the state flower of Ohio. white trillium or large flower trillium and you have one without the flower some more violets violets phlox it's your soap with saponins in it your trout lilies Here's some blue cohosh. Uh, this is a medicinal uh, Native Americans would use it to help aid in childbirth. Some more blue cohosh with some flowers. It'll get purple berries on it too later on. Again, medicinal for female uses. Also, here's some blood root. 
rid of this. Dig that up. And once you scrape the root, it's like a red, bright red, blood red. That's why it's called blood root. Uh, Native Americans used it for war paint, uh, dyes, and also for insect repellent. These have a white flower that comes up. That beside it there is Dutchman breeches. It's poisonous. some more of that right there. It's like upside down pants. Here's a pawpaw tree starting to leaf out. It's early in this one. They have a really pretty ready red flower that comes out and it's the only native fruit that's like a tropical fruit they're really good in the fall um kind of like a lemony banana or not a lemony but a custard banana flavor no more small ones some cleavers they kind of velcro stick to your clothing when these are young and small you can boil these up and they are edible they got these fine hairs right here that they stick to your clothing like velcro Here's an Ohio Buckeye tree. The nuts on these are not edible. However, they are a fish narcotic. You can crush up the nuts and use them in the stream. You crush them up real good and you find a slow moving area that's a deep enough pool deeper than this. Uh, usually these curves will have deep pools in them because it's slower flowing. See some raccoon tracks in there. And you you wade the, the crushed up Ohio Buckeye nuts into the water. And what it does is cut oxygen off to the fish and they will belly up and you can grab them or they're easier to catch and it is not harmful to you to consume the fish. It just cuts off the oxygen to the fish, it makes them easier to catch. I also had it work on a frog. It's Ohio Buckeye. There's a flowering. This is actually a really tiny young beech tree, American beech. When the leaves are this young and small, they're edible. You can digest them. Uh, also, they have the nuts that eventually come and those nuts are edible as well. Uh, you can make candy from them. You know, uh, just cover them in maple syrup let it harden. But this is American Beach. It's a small one, but right now you can eat these leaves. They're really tender. Solomon Seal. It's got some flowers there, drooping flowers. Root can be boiled and eaten like.
like a potato. This is skunk cabbage. Now early on, these leaves can be dried out. Now these contain calcium oxalate crystals that will cause intense burning, a lot like uh, Jack in the Pulpit and Green Dragon. This, um, but this is skunk cabbage. But you have to dry this out extremely thorough. Uh, I don't know, it takes a long time but you can eat it then. Boil, boiling does not do anything. It has to be thoroughly dried um, in order for it to be edible without being harmful. Uh, I know Native Americans made flour from it. That skunk cabbage right beside it is an old cut leaf tooth wart flowers are already dying off the root stock or the root of this uh, is edible and it's kind of a it tastes a lot like horseradish so you can dig up that root and it's edible I actually like it it's pretty good this is wild ginger Now these roots are really shallow, but see it there. Some wild ginger. Uh, I'm just gonna use it just like commercial ginger. I'd make tea from it as well. You don't want large quantities of it, um, but you can use it. It is edible for eating and tea see the leaves see the cup difference in comparison to blood root this is blood root see how that leaf does this it's not hairy and it has a red root so that's your wild ginger that's your blood root very aromatic this ginger. This is partridge berry. These are edible. They have a whitish interior. Uh, they're actually kind of sweet. Not too bad. Uh, I just spit the seeds out. Smart weed. See the black on the leaves. These are edible. Um, you can eat them raw or you can boil them up. Uh, the small root stock is edible as well. Um, and you don't even need to uh, peel the outer jacket of it. They're small and short, but they're edible. So that's a good survival food. There's actually lots of them. Here's a jack in the pulpit just coming out.
Now these have, just like the skunk cabbage, those calcium oxalate crystals that will burn. So it, it takes extreme measures to even, you know, think about eating the root of this. You gotta slice it extremely thin and dry it out for a very long time. Uh, I mean, up to several months for it to even be edible. But it was also used as a medicinal Native Americans. You could make a poultice out of it for, you know, itching, uh, rheumatism. A very cool wildflower. It's another jack in the pulpit. The leaves are a little bit larger and out. This is winter cress. Now these, when the unopened flower heads, they're kind of opening up now. But you can boil these unopened flower heads for five minutes and two changes of water. And it's like eating floral broccoli, little broccolettes. Very good. Winter cress. It's a wild yarrow. Makes a pleasant tasting tea. It's a medicinal and an edible. Uh, it's a blood coagulant. If you have a good cut or a wound that's bleeding, you can mash this up and it will coagulate the blood and stop the bleeding. The medicinal tea is for anxiety and insomnia, things like that. So it's a relaxing, pleasant tasting tea. It's very aromatic as well. It smells good. Yarrow. right here is jewelweed or touch me not. <clears throat> uh, this is my favorite, one of my favorite, most used wild medicinal. Um, often grows around poison ivy, but if you get into poison ivy, you crush this up, especially the stem, and get the juices out of it and rub it all over the area that you we're in contact with poison ivy and it gets rid of it. It really does work. I've made tinctures from this and sprays as well, but on the fly, as long as you do it soon, the sooner after contacting poison ivy, the better. There's a yellow flower version, pale touch me not, and an orange flower version, spotted touch me not. I get most of the juices from the stem. It's also an edible. Uh, you know, the, the seeds come in a little pea pod looking. And when they're fat, you touch them and they shoot all the seeds. That they, that's how they disperse in their seeds. But those seeds are actually edible as well. This is very small. I haven't gotten very big yet, but they'll get pretty tall in flower. Jewelweed, touch me not. Just starting to come up. It's your chickweed. All this is edible. Eat, eat the flowers. 
flowers, the leaves, the stems, common chickweed. These are wild black raspberry. Obviously wild edible for the berries when they come along later on. These leaves can be made into a tea. This is broadleafed dock, broadleaf dock. Uh, all dock species are edible. Uh, you want them young and small, but you have to boil them in several changes of water for the most part. Uh, otherwise, they're too bitter. So it ends up being pretty soupy when you, when you eat them. Um, there's nothing special about the taste or anything but it is edible. Um, this is broadleaf. There's also a common one that's curly dock. They're, they're a little bit more narrow and they tend to curl up. And, uh, they're also medicinal. The root is high in tannic acid. So um, you can make a poultice from this. They're bright yellow root. Uh, for rashes and sores and things like that. It's also, you can use, when you boil out that tannic acid from roots, you get tannic acid water and you can use that as a hide tanning additive. You know, if you're gonna be tanning a, a deer hide, uh, it's about a thimble full of water, I believe. And you can use it in that way as well. Hillside is covered in wild leaks. 